Hello and welcome to the Craft Beer Corner. For today's beer review, we're jumping into a beer from Listerman Brewing Company out of Cincinnati, Ohio. We've done plenty of their beers in the past, though it has been a while. Today's beer is called Smorty. It's a pastry stout. Um, I'm going to call it an Imperial. This one clocks in at 8.5% ABV. And this one has been brewed with chocolate, marshmallows, graham crackers, and nutmeg. So if you've watched this channel for a while, uh, you know that if I see a s'mores beer come up, I'm going to get it. It's one of my absolute favorite desserts and it works really, really well, particularly in darker beers, bigger beers like stouts. Um, so the name, Smorty, uh, you could probably tell uh, that it's inspired by the characters from a popular cartoon show. Just looking at the label, uh, really, really cool label art on this. I'm a big fan. So yeah, uh, a big stout here from Listerman. It doesn't say that they added lactose, so I'm expecting this to be a kind of traditional uh, pastry stout with no added sweetness, but we will find out when we get into the beer. So let's just get it cracked gently here. All right, and poured right in the old stout glass. Oh yeah, very dark, quite thick as it pours out. Classic for pastry. It is having no problem at all forming a head. In fact, it's uh, going quite quickly here, so I'm going to just back it off. Um, yeah, very rich, thick, creamy head. I could have been quite a bit more gentle down the glass. I didn't actually anticipate that, but visually, yeah, this one's pitch black. You're not seeing any light through this at all. Only, only 8.5%, but it is a big, thick, imperial pastry stout here. Um, I do see some kind of very tight, fine uh, effervescence carbonation kind of clinging to the bottom of the sides of the glass, slowly working its way up. So yeah, that, that tight, fine carbonation really does help with generating heads and uh, having them retain on the beer for a while. So while that's settling down, let's just jump right over this for a full sniff. Wow, yeah. Get a lot of information on the nose. So you can really smell the chocolate in there. I can't really smell the nutmeg. There's nothing that really smells like marshmallow. That's not really an aroma you expect to pick up. Um, I can't really detect the graham cracker on the nose either, but uh, it's a big dark beer. The chocolate really does stand out. Oh, there's the graham cracker and the nutmeg. Okay, as the head is settling down, I give it a little swish and it opened up a little more. Yeah, so the nutmeg, the graham cracker, and the chocolate really you can quite clearly pick out. You can also smell the underpinning of the roasty malt build that they put in here. This one does smell dark and rather chocolatey. Obviously with this chocolate edition, you know, it's gonna just kind of accentuate these aromas out of the glass, but it smells really, really nice. Obviously, uh, it's still got quite a thick head on this beer. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just gently pour down the sides of this glass to get it topped up just a bit more. Um, yeah, I mean, look. That easily, easily looks like it could have been pulled from a nitro tap. That is a fantastic beer poured at home into a glass head. And they did not even put oats in this beer. At least they didn't mention it on the can. Could that be part of their malt bill? Yeah, certainly. And if it was, as we've talked about a million times on this channel, um, always a good decision especially in a style like a stout, something where you really want there to be the best chance of forming and retaining a head. There is no better single ingredient you can add into your beer than oats. They do a fantastic job with head creation and retention. And uh, it's particularly true in my experience for beers poured at home from a can or a bottle into your glass. Obviously on a draft system, if it's set up properly, you should get a really nice thick head on any beer and specifically a nice stout even without the addition of oats. But port at home, that's a wonderful way. So if you're a home brewer and you're looking to brew a stout, a porter, something of that nature, and you wanna make sure you get a nice head on that beer, uh, try adding some oats into your malt bill, into the mash. It really does uh, make a world of difference. But this one, uh, having no problem forming a head, it settled down a bit. It's obviously gonna make a mess in my beard. You know, that's that's the way it is. So we're just going to jump right in and see what this one's about. Oh, yeah, that's a very nice beer. 
it's got a lot of presence to it. The flavor profile is really, really nice, but first, let's talk about the body and the mouthfeel. This is only 8.5% ABV. You know, it's not astronomically high. They don't even call it an Imperial themselves, uh, but I gotta tell you the presence there this beer has is out of the park. It really feels like a big, robust, heavy beer. It is punching way above its weight class for this ABV range. Um, absolutely, incredibly heavy body and a very lush, thick, viscous, just super resistant mouthfeel. It is a pastry stout after all. You don't always get that, but this one actually does deliver. It feels fantastic weight-wise and texturally. So the flavor profile. The first thing that I got when I swallowed, I did notice that there is a suggestion of sweetness. And I say a suggestion because it doesn't really taste sweet. Maybe they did put just a touch of lactose in this beer, but it does not come off as a sweet beer. Indeed, plenty of earthy, roasty bitters coming out of this rich, deep mark, uh, malt bill, but the additives come through quite clearly. Um, you can taste the marshmallow, you can't smell it, you can taste it, and that's where this kind of sweet sensation comes through that I really appreciate, because with marshmallow as an ingredient, um, without it, it can get lost in there. That's a lot of sugars in that sugar source for yeast to just immediately ferment into alcohol and leave no trace of sweetness or suggestion of it behind uh, for the marshmallow to stand out. But you can taste that individual ingredient. Um, the graham cracker is a bit more subtle, comes in on the back, on the back end, uh, when you, we start to really get into the, you know, finality of the finish stage and the underpinning of the malt bill really coming through. That's where the graham cracker comes out. The nutmeg is also subtle. It's in there. It comes a little bit on the front, a little bit on the middle, but it gains a lot more clarity along with finally being able to get that graham cracker on the back end of the finish as well. So it's not big in your face, um, but it's in there. So yes, you can pick them all out, but the kind of ratios are such that it kind of lets the malt bill do the bulk of the talking first, and then the other additives come in and play their role behind it, which is nice. Um, sometimes you get these big in your face and I love them anyway, but there's something to be said for um, kind of this deft lighter balance that lets the underpinning of the actual beer itself do the talking and then the added ingredients you put on there are just an added bonus to it. That's how I feel about this beer right here. Very, very nice. So we're gonna jump back in for a second sip, let everything re-intensify, make sure I didn't miss anything, pick it apart, um, kind of the layering if I missed anything. And then we will also, of course, talk about the balance and the finish on this beer. But on the first sip, I'm a big fan of this one, so take two. Very big, very rich. You do get this sensation of sweetness up front. That's where the chocolate itself, not cacao, but the actual chocolate really comes through. That's where the marshmallow comes through. But it doesn't stick with the sensation of sweetness for very long. Indeed, by about the two, three second mark, there's this big intensity of very rich, deep, roasty malts. It's got earthy bitters that really pop to the forefront. Then it starts to take on a lot more cacao-like quality. And there's also subtle underpinnings of coffee-like vibes. It's not strong, but it's there. And it's really once you get that 10 second dish mark and the intensity of the malts that have risen to the forefront kind of settle and level out, that's where the underpinning of the graham cracker really does pop through. The nutmeg starts to pop through as well. It's very, very nice. I've never had a s'mores ever, dessert or s'more style beer with the addition of nutmeg, but it's a nice and classy addition. It really works well in this beer, and I might actually have to try to sprinkle some on uh, the next time I make the dessert myself at home, but absolutely fantastic. So, the balance on this is very nuanced. You get a lot of ebbing and flowing. There's a lot of up and down. There's a lot of intermoving parts kind of coming in and out of one another. But kind of the big takeaway here is it is a malt bill centric beer with the additives kind of playing this nice bonus, but they also work well together. They all have their own independent voice and they do pop in and out at various points along the flavor journey and intensification of that, but it's very, very nice. This is a very deft hand with the balance. I think they nailed it. 
Um, would have been really easy to add even more of those. Maybe don't make it so malt-centric, but I think this beer is all the better for it. It's a very, very well put together malt bill, absolutely d delicious, very rich, and even lets a lot of these earthy underlying bitters pop out that you don't always get in a big pastry stout. In terms of the finish, this one's quite long, um, especially for a non-barrel-aged 8.5% pastry stout. Um, really what drives it out on this is indeed that underpinning of the malt mill. That's what I'm left with. That intended with still some haunting chocolate on the back of the palate. And I don't mean cacao, I mean it does still taste of chocolate, like a sweetened chocolate, like a chocolate bar. Although it's not sweet, it distinctly to the palate tastes like chocolate and not cacao, which is obviously very earthy and very, very bitter. But on this beer, really, really works. So how does it finish out? Yeah, it's that intensity of the underlying malt bill, and it's definitely longer than I would have anticipated for a pastry stout. All in all, this to me is one of those total package beers. It's got a nice additive ingredient list. They all work together. They all get their own voice. There's a lot of interplay. It's quite complex, but it's just extremely well done. I am most impressed with this beer, not only by the body and the mouthfeel, just its complete presence, but the selection of the malts that they put in this absolutely top notch. I'm going to take my time to sip on this one, call it my scores. When we come back, we will get this beer ranked from top to bottom. All right, now that we've gotten to enjoy this beer, we're going to get it ranked. This was Listerman Brewing Company's Smorty, an imperial pastry stout clocking in an 8.5% ABV. This one brewed with chocolate, graham crackers, marshmallows, and nutmeg. Listerman is based in Cincinnati, Ohio. So, uh, this was a really great beer. It uh, almost made a clean sweep. Easily one of the best pastry stouts I've had in a very, very long time. Indeed, there was only one category on this beer that did not get a perfect score. So we're gonna jump straight to the category in question, and that is the finish. Uh, absolute fact that the finish on this beer was way, way longer than your average uh, pastry stout to be certain. Um, this one, uh, really, really nice. What kind of pushed it out on this was the underlying uh, roasty, very deep roasted malt bill. Had a nice bit of earthy bitters underneath, underneath of it, but had a nice pungency too. There was also lingering chocolate on the back end, but it lasted way longer than I anticipated for a non-barrel aged uh, pastry stout. Well above average, as I said, it does get an eight in the finish, which leaves a perfect nine, uh, 10 out of 10 in the remaining nine categories. That's aroma, taste, body, mouthfeel, head and retention, appearance, balance, feeling and intangible, my subjective thoughts category, an example of style. So the total score on Listerman Brewing Company's Smorty is a 98 out of 100. So close to perfection. I mean, it's hard to find fault with this beer. If the uh, finish had been just a little bit longer, it probably would have clean swept it. Uh, but I had to be uh, fair. It was impressive, but not, not quite that upper, upper echelon. That's not really knocking it. It is what it is. Absolutely fantastic pastry stout. I am really glad I got my hands on this one. If you can uh, still find this either from Tavor if they bring it back in rotation, or if you can check somewhere like Craft Shack or your local Total Wine, local bottle shop, absolutely worth getting your hands on this one. Folks, that's today's review. As always, I do sincerely appreciate you tuning in today. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you want to stay in the loop when our videos go live, just turn on your notifications, hit that bell icon. It is right next to the subscribe button. Until next time, keep it beer, keep it craft. We'll see you on the next one. Cheers.